good afternoon students this is kundan sir so as we know that the lockdown period is generally increased so during this quarantine period of time we will generally start the syllabus for the 12th standard i do not have a proper study material but i have a white board a marker so i'll try to elaborate some of the diagrammatic representations here you can generally go through this videos and you can study at home and you can write down in your notebooks whatever the highlighting points are there so here we start with the new 12th standard syllabus which is already revised syllabus there in the market so you know that again you have a bio paper 1 and bio paper 2 so here bio paper 1 will be dealing with your botanical science and bio paper 2 will be dealing with your zoological sciences so we'll start today with the very first chapter that is reproduction in plants sexual reproduction in plants okay so you know very well what is reproduction reproduction is the ability of every living organism to generally produce the another living organism similar to itself right okay so you know very well pre existing organisms which are present from them the new individuals are generally produced right okay so reproduction is generally classified into two important categories one is generally called asexual reproduction and second is generally called sexual reproduction so when you talk about asexual reproduction asexual reproduction generally takes place without the help of the sex gamete and that's why it is generally called as amphomixis right okay ampho is nothing but without and mixis is nothing but mixing so in asexual reproduction you can see that whatever the individuals which are generally formed they are exactly similar to the parent cell right okay and it is a rapid process of division when you talk about the second sexual reproduction sexual reproduction generally takes place with the help of the sex gamete here the sex gametes are involved that is the male parent and the female parent so it is generally called as amphimixis amphi is both and mixing uh, mixis is nothing but mixing right okay and during sexual reproduction whatever the individuals are formed those individual may not be exactly similar to the parent cell and it is a slow method of your reproduction so today we are going to start with the very first one that is nothing but reproduction in plants right the part unit b that is sexual reproduction in plants so you know very well that in 11th standard we have studied about the flower so the basic unit for the sexual reproduction in plant is nothing but flower correct so flower is defined as a highly modified shoot region especially produced for the process of sexual reproduction now flower is basically divided into two part one is generally called essential world and second is called non essential world right so when we talk about essential worlds of the flower this are the worlds of the flower or the parts of the flower which generally participate in the process of sexual reproduction right and and non essential or accessory worlds of the flower these are the parts of the flower which never participate in sexual reproduction so they are generally called as non essential part of the flower right so non essential parts are calyx and corolla you know very well calyx the outermost wall of the flower and corolla the second largest inner uh, wall of the flower calyx is generally made up of sepals and the corolla is generally made up of petals right okay so now when we talk about the essential worlds of the flower that is they participate in the sexual reproduction there are two types one is generally called androecium and second is generally called gynoecium correct androecium is the male sex part of the flower and gynoecium is the female sex part of the flower androecium is generally made up of stamen and gynoecium is generally made up of carpel right so when we talk about the structure of a stamen the stamen is generally made up of a long slender filament which is generally called filament second part which is generally called anther and the anther is divided into the two septum by a segment which is generally called connective right so here we come upon the very first structure that is structure of a anther we are going to study the transfer section that is the internal structure of a anther so i have drawn a rough diagram here it's clear i hope so right okay so let's have a structure of the ts of anther right when i talk about the anther anther is again a male part of a flower right male part of a flower it means that the stamen when we talk about the stamen right isn't it stamen is generally made up of filament anther and connective now let's talk about the transfer section of anther anther is basically made up of two important part one is generally called as the anther wall and second is generally called pollen sac correct okay pollen sac also called as microsporangium right now 
Internally, this anther is generally made up of the following important layer. The first one is generally called epidermis, right? So you can see the anther is externally covered by an outer protective fibrous covering. That outer protective fibrous covering is generally called as epidermis, right? So epidermis is the outermost covering or the lining of the entire anther, right? Okay, now inner to the epidermis, you can see inner to the epidermis or you can say below the epidermis correct so below the epidermis you have the second layer which is generally called as endothecium which is generally made up of a thickening of layer of callus right okay callus you know it's a kind of a polysaccharide right now the thickening of this endothecium right and the fibrous nature of this endothecium plays an important role in the dehiscence of anther you know very well what do you mean by dehiscence of anther dehiscence is the type of a process where the anther generally ruptures during the maturity to release the pollen grain from the pollen sac so there the endothecium plays a very very important role Correct, and this endothecium also plays an important role in the formation of a chemical component called as poropollenin, which is a component of a exine of the pollen grain. You can see here, exine is the outermost rough layer of the pollen grain, and that is generally made up of your sporopollenin. The third layer is generally called as middle layer. You can see inner to the endothecium, two to three layers, two to three layers of parenchymatous cells are present. These are generally called as your middle layer, right? So middle layer generally plays an important role that is after the uh, maturity I mean to say after the maturity of the anther whenever the anther gets totally matured up this your middle layer generally gets degenerated okay now the innermost layer of the anther is generally called as tapatum you can see that the innermost layer of the anther is called as tapatum now this tapatum is a layer which generally provides the nourishment or the nutrients to the pollen grain right these are the pollen grains can you see right this is the pollen sac so inside the pollen sac the pollen grains are present and they are generally provided by a nutrients and that layer is generally tapatum so tapatum generally provides nutrients to the pollen grain hence it is nutritive in function and the last part you can see pollen sac are present pollen sac also called as microsporangium correct okay now when i talk about the pollen sac you know very well anther is a bilobe structure that is it is made up of two lobes one is called as the right lobe and second is called left lobe right okay so as it is a anther is a bilobed structure you can see two pollen sac or the microsporangia at each corner right that is here you can see two pollen sac and here you can see two pollen sac right now this pollen sac or the microsporangia generally contains diploid sporogenous cell right and this diploid sporogenous cell undergoes mitosis cell division right you know very well mitosis cell division mitosis means a single cell is going to divide to form two daughter cell so here a single pollen sac right generally contains your diploid sporogenous cell and this diploid sporogenous cell undergoes your mitotic cell division to form your microspore mother cell right okay now this microspore mother cell will again undergo your meiotic cell division and it will generally lead to the formation of four haploid four haploid microspore or the pollen grain right and the process which generally involves the formation of the pollen grain or the microsporangia is generally called as microsporogenesis this is the structure of the anther that is the transfer section of anther so let's have a small revision about it we have generally four important layers right the outermost is generally called as epidermis epidermis is the outermost fibrous layer protecting the entire anther second that is below in the epidermis you have a second layer which is generally called as endothecium right endothecium is thickened due to the deposition of the callus and it is fibrous in nature right and due to this nature it plays an important role in dehiscence of anther that is hygroscopic nature and the thickening of the callus these are the two factors due to which it leads to the dehiscence of anther dehiscence is a process where there is a bursting of your pollen grain that is uh, anther to release the pollen grain right third is your middle layer Middle layer is generally made up of two to three layers of parenchymatous cell and during the maturity of the anther, it generally gets degenerated.
tapatum it is the innermost layer of the anther and it plays a very very important role in providing the nutrients to the pollen grain so it is nutritive in function and pollen sac also called as microsporangia they generally contains your correct now they generally contains your pollen grain right but they initially contains your diploid sporogenous cell that undergoes mitosis to form microspore mother cell microspore mother cell further undergoes meiosis cell division to form your four haploid pollen grain right so now let's have in detail the structure of the pollen grain as we have already generally heard the word pollen grain so we are now going to concentrate more among the pollen grain right okay so structure of the pollen grain you can see i have drawn a labeled diagram about the pollen grain right okay now when we talk about the pollen grain okay when we generally talk about the pollen grain okay pollen grain is generally best defined as a partially developed male gametophyte right pollen grain is best defined as partially developed male gametophyte what do you mean by partially developed male gametophyte that is nothing but incomplete developed male gametophyte is in its initial stage is generally known as pollen grain right okay so pollen grain is best defined as a partially developed male gametophyte okay when you talk about this pollen grain you know very well isn't it in a flower when you talk about the anther the anther generally contains your pollen sac and the pollen sac generally contains your pollen grain right okay so now the pollen grain is basically made up of two important layers right the outer layer is generally called as the exine and the inner layer is generally called as the indine okay now when you talk about this first layer which is called exine exine is the outermost thick and rough layer of the pollen grain right whereas indine indine is the innermost correct it is the innermost thin and smooth layer of the entire pollen grain so the outer layer is called exine inner layer is called indine outer layer is exine exine is generally rough and it is thick in nature and indine is the inner layer which is generally smooth and it is thin layer right now when you talk about this exine the exine is generally made up of a very important type of a chemical component which is called sporopollenin right now what is the function of the sporopollenin is that sporopollenin is a chemical component which plays an important role in biological degradation of the pollen grain there should not be any physical or the biological degradation of the pollen grain that's why the entire exine is generally made up of a chemical component named as sporopollenin okay now exine also contains your minute aperture or the opening which are generally really called as the germ pore right so germ pore are the minute openings which are generally present at the exine and they play an important role in the formation of the pollen tube right so initially when we talk about the pollen grain pollen grain is a unicellular and a uninucleated structure right okay so earlier it is unicellular and uninucleated structure but as it undergoes maturation right it generally forms two celled structure how much two cell state structure one is generally called as your smaller cell and the second is generally called as a larger cell you can see in the diagram the smaller cell is generally the generative cell and the larger cell is generally the tube cell correct okay so smaller cell is generally called generative cell and the larger cell is generally called as the tube cell right and the entire pollen grain is generally surrounded by the cytoplasm so cytoplasm is scattered all around the pollen grain that is the simple structure of a pollen grain also called as microsporangia and the process where there is a formation of the pollen grain is generally called as microsporogenesis okay so let's have a small revision again about the pollen grain right pollen grain pollen grain is best defined as the partially developed male gametophyte correct what do you mean by partially developed male gametophyte the incomplete developed male gametophyte is your pollen grain at the initial stage correct pollen grain is divided into two layer the outer layer is called exine and the inner layer is called indine exine is outer rough thick layer indine is inner smooth and thin layer right exine is made up of a chemical component called sporopollenin which plays an important role in uh, correct which plays an important role to prevent the physical and biological degradation of the pollen grain 
right exine is also generally made up of a smaller pores which are generally called as the germ pores and germ pore plays an important role in the formation of the pollen tube during the process of the formation of the male gametophyte now initially the pollen grain is unicellular and uninucleated structure but at the maturity it generally forms two cell state structure the smaller cell is called generative cell and the larger cell is called tube cell correct the generative cell is smaller and the tube cell is larger and the entire structure of the pollen grain is generally surrounded by a structure which is called cytoplasm so this is the structure of ts of anther that is transfer section of a anther this is the structure of a pollen grain also called as microsporangium thank you very much